Today we're going to look at a way of praying that will help us do some digging, some searching, and better understand some elements of our inner life. This is a form of prayer that we didn't think about it too much for, for many years as Jesuits. And only recently, Adolfo Cercoles, a Jesuit from Spain, kind of opened up the meaning of this prayer and how it is useful today. He's a psychologist, and um, he looked at it from a different angle. We used to think, well, it's the Ten Commandments. He says, Ignatius says to pray first with the Ten Commandments, then with the seven deadly sins. So it looks like an examination of conscience. And then he says, pray with the three powers of the soul, which are memory, understanding, and will. And then with the five senses. And you think, what does this have to do with, with anything? And what Adolfo Cercola said is that if you look at it from the perspective of what doing that in that order will do, is that it helps you do a very deep search for where is this lack of freedom that I encounter in me coming from, and to invite the Lord there. So we can think of the Ten Commandments. We know them. They're basically things where we get in big trouble, <laughs> where we have God's dream for the world, and we see that our way of doing things is at odds. <laughs> Mesha says, you know, this is not something that you are finding yourself breaking regularly. It's probably not something to look at, but there might be other kind of big trouble that we realize we get into in the spiritual life. We know the Ten Commandments. Abandoning your father and your mother when they're in their old age. Stealing. But every time they happen, they're just the tip of the iceberg. Because when we look further, we can see that they're the result of a way of life. Of a habitual way of being. A way of thinking. And we can look at those. It used to be called the Seven Deadly Sins. Now we talk more about habits. You can see, for example, lust. Somebody that is delighting in all kinds of thinking or objectivizing the other for my pleasure. Then it turns into adultery sometimes. Somebody that is keeping thoughts of, in, it could be envy or wrath, and constantly it might end up in a killing. When it gets really out of control, sloth, greed, pride, all of these are ways of being, a way in which I constantly relate to pleasure, for example, with lust and, and with gluttony, uh, to sloth, the way I relate to action and decisions, the way I relate to my goods and the goods of others, envy, the way I relate to money, greed, the way I relate to myself and how I see myself a lot of times is where pride comes from and wrath even. When I, pride is that I put myself above and wrath a lot of times is a sense of being a victim and, and I raise myself by, by looking at this wrathful, you know, angry thoughts. So, even that doesn't have the last word. Some of it goes above the line of the public sphere, which is kind of where the iceberg that others see. This is what we confess. But then we get into the stuff that happens underneath the surface, inside our heart, our inner life. And that's where the three powers of the soul are. This is kind of how we make sense of the world. And Ignatius takes three as the main ones to be memory, understanding, and will. So if we look at all of those habitual ways of being, the first thing to look at with our will is that they don't just happen to us. A lot of times we tend to enter into some of this almost like, well, we can help it. But if we go 
to the actual moment where it happened, there is a part of me that makes a decision. And for one person, it's different than the other, what triggers us. And that's where we do a little bit of digging. How did I come to these decisions about constantly thinking about this or that, or constantly relating in this way or that? And if I do a little digging, then I can look at my understanding. Meaning, I understand that if I don't defend myself, then others will abuse me, for example. So I'm constantly harboring thoughts of violence. <laughs> I understand that if I don't eat now, I might not have food later. So constantly think about food. I understand that you name it. With each of them, they each might have several paths. For one person, the thing with food could be one thing. For another, it might be different. It might be having to do with pleasure. That if I don't eat now, who's going to take care of myself if I don't take care of myself? And life is tough, and I've worked so hard, so I might as well <laughs> eat now. Um, with decisions, a lot of times it has to do with, I tried once, and it didn't work out, so I'm not going to put myself on the line anymore. Or I've experienced violence, so I need to really make sure I know why it was wrong and how I'm going to defend it. And with all of this, there's an understanding about life about those relationships that is getting out of, blown out of proportion. And if I look at that, then I could probably connect with another very important piece, which is my memory. There's real stuff that has happened to me. A lot of these understandings, we come to them as a way of protecting ourselves. A lot of times when we're, young, when we're younger. And this also connects with our senses with my experience. I've had real experiences of difficult things that I've been through. And that's how I came to make sense of the world. The things that I've touched, smelled, tasted, seen, heard, ways in which I've been called things, ways in which I've been uh, mistreated. And, and some of these things, God doesn't want them. We might think God sent him, I can assure you, God does not want sin in the world. And some of this stuff, the Lord wants to really just accompany it. If we've experienced violence, if we've experienced mistreatment, if we in childhood experienced um, lack of care, and a lot of these things, the Lord wants to come in and say, would you let me? Be your father? <laughs> Would you let me cry with you? Or say, I didn't want that. The Lord wants to say that. The Lord is the way, the truth, and the life. And as an adult, we look at it now and we start with the big trouble in our lives. And we search. And a lot of times we come to realize that a lot of the stuff comes from when we were younger. Perhaps as a child, perhaps when I was starting out in the world. And uh, God is kind of on the side of reality. <laughs> we kind of lose a lot of times our ground, our, son, our sense of reality with some of these wounds. We blow some things out of proportion. We know it in our reaction sometimes. But as adults... We do that search like that, and, and the reality is that as children, it was the other way around. We first started with the senses, then we made sense of the world, and then we developed these habits, and now we break big trouble. <laughs> this way of praying just helps us look at our life and help us do a little bit of searching. So perhaps this Lent, we can start gaining a little more freedom just by inviting the Lord to some of those memories, to that experience, maybe talking to the Lord about 
what are those understandings that I have about the world that are not helping me? And let the Lord tell me how He understands things from Scripture. We know that the Lord says, You're my beloved child in whom I take the light. That we don't need to be proving ourselves to anybody. We are His beloved child. We don't need to prove our sense of worth. We don't need to take vengeance. We, the Lord wants to tell us it was wrong. <laughs> and uh, when we let that happen, a lot of these things uh, actually start healing. And they don't control us anymore. We're aware of them. And we can enter into things a little bit differently. So hopefully it's a helpful tool for us to try out this week. And I'll see you around. God bless.